In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what is uh, global null hypothesis and why is it important to look at this statistic um, when you're building uh, a regression model. In most of this uh, software, statistical software, whether it's SAS or R or SPSS, you will get this statistics in uh, regression uh, models. So why is it important and uh, why should actually uh, look at it? So um, if you're doing a multiple uh, linear regression, uh, you will come up, uh, will come across uh, the statistics. Um, in this case, uh, the individual test of hypothesis for estimate is not enough. So uh, we test uh, for p values, right? Um, in simple uh, linear regression, uh, we look at the p value uh, for uh, the uh, independent variable and see whether it's significant or not. And then um, you know we try to explain um, the uh, model. But in multiple linear regression, we simply cannot go to the uh, p values of individual uh, estimates, right? Before that, we need to uh, we need to see what is known as a global null hypothesis. So let me first define what is global null hypothesis and why is it so important. So let's, uh, for example, we have a model y equal to beta naught uh, plus beta 1 x1, beta 2 x2 and beta 3 x3. So there are three variables, independent variables, and we have got three, uh, you know, estimates. So uh, our global null hypothesis is uh, all the betas or all the estimates are zero. So beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta 3 equal to zero. And the alternative is that at least one of the beta is non-zero, right? So what you try to, uh, I mean, uh, if you think logically, what you're trying to say is that um, none of the variable uh, actually contribute to the model or the model itself is actually uh, not, you know, giving any uh, or not able to capture any pattern in the data, right? So it says that none of the independent variables actually explain anything about your dependent variable y. And the alternative is that out of the set of independent variables that we have, at least one of them uh, explains the variation in y. And this is important before we even go and look at the, uh, the uh, significant statistics of each one of these estimates. Now, an obvious question that comes, and we'll uh, we'll see that in next slide. Um, before before that, let me uh, let me explain how do we perform this test of global null hypothesis. So we compute uh, f statistics. Uh, so we compute f statistics, and f statistic is given by the total sum of squares minus the residual sum of squares, and p here is the number of variables, independent variables. And n here is uh, the number of observation, right? So ideally, uh, if global uh, null hypothesis or H naught is satisfied, that means all betas are zero. They do not. They're not all. Uh, they're not significant. Uh, they're not jointly significant. Then f will be close to one or equal to one, right? Uh, we'll not go into the details of uh, this proof, but yes, it's going to be one. L it should be greater than one and it should be significantly more than one, right? Uh, for the um, alternative hypothesis to be, uh, you know, valid or the null hypothesis to be uh, rejected, right? We expect PF value to be uh, more than one uh, most of the times. So, um, and why is it so important? That's the next question. Why we use global null hypothesis? Uh, let's take an example to understand this. Let's say there are 100 variables, 100 independent variables, right? Now we all know that uh, our, our uh, confidence level is most, most of the time it's 95%. That means we are only sure about 95% of the significance level that we have, we have uh, found out in the model or we have estimated in the model. Right. So out of these 100 models, since we do not know about the 5% of uh, the variables, right? So at least 5 of the variables out of these 100, we are not sure whether they are going to be significant or insignificant. Or our model is not able to find it out for us. Right. So maybe 
out of these 100 variables, one or two variables or maybe all five variables which are out of scope of this model are significant. So what if uh, you know a variable is significant in a model but that is actually from the 5% not from the 95% where we have the confidence. So if you directly go to the model and see an estimate and and, and, and you're, you're happy that at least one of the variable is significant and, and hence we should go ahead with the model, it could be wrong because that particular significance level may be from the 5% level. Now this doesn't, this problem is not there with F statistics because F statistics keep on adjusting itself with respect to you know, uh, variables. Right? So this problem is not there with it. So when we are uh, sure about the global null, null hypothesis, we are sure that at least one of the variable is significant and then we find out you know some of the variables are significant in the model then we are very sure about it. If we are not very sure at the global level, then we cannot go down, right? We cannot, I mean, even if there are number of variables, independent variables, which are significant late, at later stage, we are doing something wrong. That means the significant level is actually coming from the 5% of uncertainties involved in these variables, involved in the uh, modeling. So global null hypothesis is, is probably uh, the first step when you look at uh, the results from a regression. If that's not satisfied, then there's no point going uh, into the details of uh, the, uh, you know, the regression estimates. So it is always good to, you know, confirm that your global null hypothesis is satisfied. That means you reject the null hypothesis and then go to uh, the uh, maximum likelihood uh, estimates or the uh, estimates from uh, least square and then um, interpret it otherwise uh, it's going to be uh, totally wrong.